Hey everyone, today I'm going to be doing my 2017 non-beauty favorites. I split it up into two this year. I think last year I intended to do the same thing and I don't think I ever did my non-beauty favorites. And non-beauty favorites are very important to me, just in case you missed my makeup, skincare, hair, fashion, all of those kind of favorites. I'll link that video down below if you wanna see it. It is long, it is important. I don't know how important, it, it's not that important. But this video is very important, or at least you guys seem to think so a lot of you guys said you still want to see this video even though it's like 2017 it's in the dust it's in the past we've all forgotten it probably not the scars are real but I'm here for you I'm doing it I've got a lot of non-beauty favorites but probably way more than is actually in this list which brings me to you guys gotta subscribe to my channel because I talk about non-beauty favorites in every favorites video so like if there's a new thing I'm watching a new thing I'm listening to a new playlist like all kinds of stuff like random things I throw it into my my favorites and usually it's at the end so subscribe if you haven't subscribed I just have to say that I love to have you back it's like you have to be annoying to be a youtuber I don't know. Anyway, right now I've got podcast favorites, movie favorites, TV favorites, Netflix favorites, a book, some really random stuff. It's kind of all over the place, but they are things that I loved. And if you haven't checked them out, I think you should. I'm gonna start out with podcasts because I feel like people are always asking me, especially on Twitter, what are the new podcasts that I'm listening to? Because you guys know I'm obsessed with podcasts. I'm always listening to them like every single day. I love to have something on in the background. And it doesn't have to be like a series or whatever. The ones that I'm going to be talking about are all series, but sometimes they can just be like the interview kind or whatever. I don't ever really listen to the radio. So it's always music or podcasts in the background of my life 24 seven. So I have a lot of like standby favorites that I listen to like weekly or daily or whatever, but I had two really standout favorites for the past year. First, if you are a podcast listener, it probably doesn't surprise you at all, but S Town. Oh man. And I was obsessed. I listened to this podcast so fast. I normally don't binge podcasts. This might have been my first podcast that I actually binged because other ones that I've really, really loved in the past, they come out like episodes, like you get them weekly. But this one came out all at once and it was so good. It comes from the same people that did Serial and This American Life, both podcasts I really, really love. But don't compare it to either one of those. I mean, kind of because it's like a storytelling thing. And it's kind of an investigation kind of thing. It's sort of about a murder. It's sort of about a death. But mostly for me, it was about this one guy. And he is an absolute character. Obviously, it's based on real life. It's all real life interviews and real things that happened. But John B. McElmore is like a guy out of a TV show. He's a guy out of a book. And it was so interesting. And the way he talks, it was engrossing to me. It's about this little town and all this weird stuff happened. And the guy who created it, he just got wrapped up in it and it is I don't want to give away too much but it's definitely worth a listen if you like storytelling if you like listening to stuff that is not really I don't know at times it felt a little bit aimless because it went so many different directions but that is okay with me like I'm down for the ride it does not have to be what I expect and I absolutely love this one if somehow you didn't listen to it which I feel like everybody listened to it already maybe if you have like a long commute or I don't know if you're like me you just listen to podcasts every day check it out it's worth it the next one is a more recent favorite. It's called Heaven's Gate. You have probably guessed. It's about the Heaven's Gate cult. And I know I've said this before, but I have always had a semi unhealthy obsession with cults. Like ever since I was a child, as a small child, I chose to do a school project about cults. It was like, you choose your own topic. And I went for cults, like as a nine year old or something like what? Obviously nothing has changed. I'm still completely obsessed. I think I heard about it on another podcast. They said this was coming out and it's Glenn Washington or he's the host and he's also the host of Snap Judgment. I also listen to that one pretty regularly, not as much lately, but it's a very good like standby classic, not classic, but you know, it's been around for a while. It's a good podcast and I love his voice. And he actually had a past in a cult. And so he's coming from a very interesting perspective and he did 
include some of that, which I really, really liked. And it's just like the history, the people, they interview actual past Heaven's Gate's members. If you don't know what Heaven's Gate is, it was a, I don't know if they considered it a doomsday cult. It ended up being like that. It ended in the late 90s, like 97, in a mass suicide. But don't let that scare you if you didn't know anything about that. It's a really interesting story. It's really interesting to hear from the families of the members of the cult. They actually have like phone calls that were recorded from the people that were in the cult when they would like very, very rarely call home because they would never go home. But they were just like desperate to get them back. And okay, I'm probably going way too into this, but if you're interested in cults and things like that, you might really like Heaven's Gate. And when I've talked about this one, like on Snapchat or Instagram stories or whatever, a lot of people have told me to listen to the cults podcast. I'm way ahead of you. <laughs> I don't like that one as much though. I don't know. Never mind. I'm not here to talk about things that I don't like, but Heaven's Gate is definitely worth a listen. Honorable mention, not to go too far into this topic, but Missing Richard Simmons. Missing Richard Simmons. I actually don't even know if that one came out last year. It might have been older than that. But when I was done with S Town, I was like frantically wanting more. Like I needed another like bingeable podcast because that's what happens to me when I finish a series, like if on Netflix or whatever, it's like I get addicted to that like extreme focus and I want something that is just as good so I can just like continue that feeling. I don't know, probably not a healthy characteristic, but I go with it. And I asked you guys, I think I was on Twitter and that one was suggested to me. So I listened to that one directly after S Town and I didn't like it as much, but it was very interesting. And I did very much appreciate that it exists basically. <laughs> okay, wait, total side thing, not to make this about lipstick or anything, but in case you're wondering what's on my mouth today, because it's something a little bit different, I'm aware of that. Um, it is two liquid lipsticks from Jouer. Uh, the dark color is aubergine, aubergine, mm, sorry. And the lighter color is Bayer. It's kind of like a gray purple. I don't know how it's showing up for you, but I'm kind of liking it. I'm supposed to go to the orthodontist later. <laughs> Not sure how that's gonna go over. Okay, I don't know what to call this category. It's just like random items. I only have two. The first random item I have is kind of like an Amazon favorite. I feel like a lot of people are doing Amazon favorites videos and I'm loving them because you already know I'm obsessed with Amazon. I have an addiction, I have a problem and I am not seeking treatment whatsoever. But I feel like this is my top Amazon favorite find of the last year. It has helped me so, so, so much, especially Especially since I had an iPhone for the whole last year and I pretty much hated it. Yes, I wanna switch over, but that's not what this is about. I'm not sure if I'm going to, I don't know what's gonna happen, but this thing saved the day. My vlog camera can do like the Wi-Fi connection where I can send pictures over to my phone really easily, but sometimes it doesn't really work. And sometimes it's really, really annoying. You have to do like jump through all these stupid hoops for this phone, which you didn't have to do on any of my Android phones. It was just like a one step, one button kind of process. And on this, it's just like, oh, oh, oh. it's like so clunky, so awful. I found this and I always have it in my purse. It is a lightning cable where you can put in an SD card. So it's just like a little tail that hangs off your phone, goes in the little thing. And you can put an SD card in there from your camera and transfer pictures. You can do a bunch of pictures at once. You can bring this with you. And if you have a bunch of pictures on your camera and you wanna give them to a family member on their phone or something, that has also been really helpful for me. This thing is just awesome. It didn't cost much. I'll link it down below if you want one too. I know not everyone uses like actual cameras, so maybe this isn't like as usable for you guys, but it really like saved me, saved my sanity. I mean like at least a little bit of it. I still got a little bit and it's thanks to that thing. Okay, next up is a candle. I won't go on too much about that because I feel like candles, it's just like, it's so personal, you know? Not everybody likes the same stuff. And you guys know, I like the boyfriend candles and I discovered this brand, it's called Boy Smells. The whole branding look, the packaging, I love it. This one is in ash and the scent is like firewood, smoke, charcoal, palo santo, and hay. It smells so good. I love this. 
I love this. Since I got this one, I also got the cedar stack and this one's cedar. Okay, I'm not even gonna go all of this. It smells like wood. It smells like Christmas, but not Christmassy Christmas. It's like a all year round Christmas wood candle. I haven't burned this one as much as this one. I'm like heartbroken that I'm even making a dent in this one. I don't know why. I just get obsessed. And when I love something, I'm like, don't burn it. But like, you love it, so you wanna burn it. I feel like I grew up in the depression. What is wrong with me? <laughs> Next up for the Netflix category, I kind of feel like I'm presenting award. And the nominees are, no, the winners are. Uh, number one, I have to say this, and I feel like this one should have been in last year's favorites. I don't even know, but I don't think it made it in there. And I have to mention it now because it is still relevant. I watched it like several times through the year. I even watched it like a couple of days ago because if I'm having an off day, which I've been having some off days <laughs> lately, I go to this comedy special and it renews my spirit. It understands me. It is so good. It will heal your soul. I mean, if you think it's funny, I don't know. Some of you guys might not think it's funny at all, but the special is called Baby Cobra and it's Ali Wong. And it's my very first experience with her. I had never heard of her before and I just randomly clicked on it and watched it and she is hysterical. Oh my gosh, I could watch this over and over and over again and still laugh out loud. <laughs> LOL, y'all. I love stand up, but it does take kind of a lot for me to be like, this is a favorite. Everyone should watch it because I know it's like pretty personal, just like candles. Like not everybody is gonna like the same stuff, but like Ali Wong, if you do not think she's funny, I feel like you don't understand me as a person. Like it is so funny and the ending. <laughs> she did that right. I cannot wait for her to come out with more. In fact, I need to like Google it. I just need to know when she's doing something new because she is so funny to me. I love her so much. Please watch it. Next up was a series called Mindhunter. I feel like a lot of people probably already watched it, but if you didn't and you like crime dramas or like true crime kind of stuff, it's fiction and it's like true stories also. I don't know. It's very loose, but it is really, really, really good. I loved it. I wanted to watch it so quickly, but I couldn't. And it was so frustrating because I was watching it with Grant and we're like long distance. It's a frustrating thing to try to watch a show because I just want to like go and go and go and go and go, but I can't. Or he says I'm a bad person. And I really do try not to be a bad person, <laughs> but it was really, really good. It's about a guy that's in the FBI and blah, blah, blah. And it's kind of like the beginning of the whole serial killer thing, or it's the beginning of them really like investigating into that and like getting into what that that means, the psychology and blah, blah, blah. It's really good. It's kind of disturbing, but it's not scary. Don't be scared. It's a good one. Okay, on this list, I definitely went from like most lighthearted to like deepest, darkest, might make you feel sick in your stomach. It's so dark. My last Netflix favorite is The Keepers. It's hard to even say this is like a favorite, but I just feel like it was so well done. It was so engaging. It like took over my life. I like things that when I watch them or or listen to them or whatever, it just kind of takes over and it can actually like kind of affect your mood in a way. This one was definitely not a feel good. The Keepers is about, how do I even summarize it? It's about a murder, but it's also about these women that have had all these memories from their high school and this priest that worked there. And I don't wanna give anything away, but it's this huge tangled web of memories and things that got brushed under the rug for a really long time and this murder that has never really been solved. And like I said, I'm really into like true crime stuff. And this is like the definition of like a gritty documentary. Like it will break your heart over and over and over again, but it was something that I like could not put down. I don't even know how to describe it. I don't want to give anything away, but if that sounds like something that you would like, check it out. I don't know how to talk about this, but I liked it. And I definitely think it's worth watching. I feel like when you watch that stuff and you see the other side of something or you learn about something that you never knew existed, even if it's a really bad thing, I think it expands your world and it makes you think about something in a new way. And I think it's good for us to do that. And I think it's good for us to spend our time at least like paying attention to those things so that more of that kind of stuff will happen. Do you know what I mean? So like if we all watch The Keepers and Netflix sees that everyone's really interested in these kind of things and they want to uncover like the dirty truth about things, you know, maybe more stuff like that will happen in the future. I don't know, maybe I'm thinking too far into it, but that's just what I do. Next for Amazon 
Prime. I am now thinking like, am I totally shunning Hulu? I have all of them. I don't have cable in my house, but I have like every single streaming service. I don't know if I even really need them, but I had a huge major favorite from Amazon Prime, which I've never had before. As far as I can remember, I don't know. I watch a lot of things, but it was semi-recent. I watched Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. It is so good. And like, usually I would look at a show like that and be like, not for me, no thanks. Like I like the dark and scary stuff. I'm not so much into like the happy go lucky stuff, but I'm so glad that I gave it a chance because it is so good. I love the soundtrack too. The story is really amazing. I think it's done by the same people that did Gilmore Girls, which I watched for a period, but I never watched the whole thing. I know you guys are like gasping and falling on the floor. I know so many people love that show and I should probably like put time into it. I'm sure I'd love it, but it is so good. If you don't relate to the whole like, oh, scary documentary stuff, Mrs. Maisel is for you. It is so good. It's about a lady in the 50s that is getting into stand-up comedy and all of the everything that goes with that. There's relationship drama. There is her being a woman doing stand-up in the 50s drama. It is just so good and so worth watching. And I think that it just won awards. I don't know. I didn't watch the award show. I don't really watch award shows, but it is so worth it. You have to watch it. It just makes me want to dance around and be living in the 50s. I don't know why I can't just do that. That's all I want to do. Next, I have two actual TV favorites, which is so rare for me. I like never get to watch TV, especially since Grant moved, but I had two huge favorites at the beginning part of the year. First is Legion, which is something that's like totally out of like my usual watching box. It's not a superhero show, like at all. It really isn't. It really isn't. And like when I've got the first whiff of like, is this like a, is this, what is this? Like I got a little worried. I got a little cringy. I am not like into the comic book stuff. I'm not into superhero stuff. I like Batman, but everybody likes Batman. But this is so good. It's just season one. It is like a treat for the eyes. I do not even know how to say that in a normal way. It is just so cool to watch. I love how they did the set design. I love how they did the effects. I love how they did the wardrobe. It is so weird and cool. And there are some super scary moments, but it's not cheesy scary like TV usually is. Like with all these things, I want to describe it, but I also don't want to give anything away. Basically, the main guy was thought to be like schizophrenic his whole life. And then later it turns out that he has these powers and then he meets these other people. I'm not going to go all the way into it. It's just amazing. Like if you're kind of doubtful or whatever, just like watch a trailer. It is so worth it. I don't know when it's coming back, but that is another thing I need to research because I just realized how much I miss it. <laughs> My other big TV favorite is actually also from FX. They just doing it right. What can I say? It's Baskets and it was season two last year. And I feel like I might have even liked season two better than season one. Louis Anderson as the mom, just, it just, it, <sighs> Again, if you don't think this is funny, I feel like you don't understand me as a person. Baskets is just hilarious to me. There's no point in really like telling the story. It's just a very good show. It's just very funny. My last favorite is a book that I read that I talked about in a vlog. I talked about it in a favorites video and I like read books, listen to books, like I a lot of self-help stuff, okay? And I feel like nothing has been like stand out enough. This is actually the only, I guess it is nonfiction actually, but backing up, it's called the Sarah book by Scott McClanahan. And it is one of those things that completely immersed me, took over my life for like a whole weekend and kind of wrecked me. It is not a feel good. Yet again, not a feel good. Have you noticed a trend? It is about his divorce and his family and his marriage, or I believe his first marriage. And it is so heart wrenching and it will mess you up. But for some reason, I like that feeling. I like to just be like taken over by a story or a, you know a work of art and this absolutely did that and when I was done listening to it I kind of wanted to listen to it again I didn't because I wanted to like snap out of it but it is so good and I would absolutely suggest getting the book on audible this is not a sponsored thing I've never been sponsored by audible I'm probably the only person on the internet that has not been sponsored by audible but I would absolutely say do audible I really like to listen to things so that generally works for me really well but 
he reads the book and his accent is amazing. He's from the South. He has like a very Southern accent and the way he writes, I feel comes out better. I don't know. It's just better in his voice in my opinion. So check that out if that speaks to you. That's actually all of my favorites. I feel like that's a very weird part to like jump off at. I really want to do my goals for the year. Do you guys want to see that? I feel like I got a mixed response on Instagram stories, but I still really want to do it. I've never done a video like that in the past and I'm feeling the need. I like wrote down goals and I thought about doing a video. I feel kind of inspired to do it. I feel like I want to share and like get some things off my chest for this year to maybe inspire me or I don't know, keep me accountable. I'm not really sure why, but that's how I feel this year. But I don't want to do it unless you guys want to see it. So let me know. Again, don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you're already subscribed. Thank you so much. You are my people and I love you. You can find me on social media. It's Leanne Says Everywhere. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye everyone. I can hear Luna snoring. Luna, why are you snoring? She's snoring like a bear. Ew, 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 no. This is not going. Wow, this lipstick has got to go. Am I pretty, mommy?